Hello there. Someone said, how about an on-screen display which says what box we're on? We're on box 26. It's Radio 3 of 8 from this box. And it's a Maxcom 30E. We're using Mr. Picky. Mr. Picky. Mr. Chippy's pink tablet. It's very good for doing Morse code with this. It really is. Right, there's your on-screen display. How posh is that? I'd better put his pink stylus back. These were Audi a little, but it was only unfortunately the wrong colour. Right, um, so this is an immaculate Maxcom 30E. Um, people who buy these will be disappointed. Well, people who buy these will be disappointed. That's which has got to go and see Mr. Chippy's department to be repaired um, people will be disappointed on the receiver these are crystal filtered as standard and the problem is unless you're talking to your pals that you know are on perfectly working perfectly serviced spot on radios and everybody will sound distorted because the slightest bit off frequency that somebody is or if they're over deviating they will sound dreadful it's not the radio's fault They've got, they've gone and made it better, you know, and uh, the result is that all the uh, the bad buddies sound dreadful. Now we haven't got a power lead because we sold our last one, so I'll have to open it up to do the initial tests. Oh look, he's got a security seal. Wow, an eBay security seal. I think he bought it off eBay. So it should be absolutely spot on, and it's going to be so spot on that perhaps we'll only have to charge him our inspection and test fee rather than actual retune and test. We will find out. I'll probably peel half the paint off with this. Probably cut it. <laughs> We've got anything to cut it with? No, we haven't. The precision screwdriver will do just the job. Good. Oh, what about the fingernail? Oh, that's an even better job. So we actually want the bottom off this. When respraying cases, always remove the speaker and don't spray over the screws. So this is going to need... Oh! Whoa! Well, that's something that wants addressing. Mr. Insulting Tape's been inside. Put that to one side on that piece of whatever that's up there, polystyrene. That looks nice and sound. So we're not going to touch anything until we've done the tests. Make sure that bottom. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We'll put one screw in the bot in this because on the on these sets you've only got four screws, and I don't want the case to be sliding around and shorting out the the radio. So, plug in the test equipment. So it's basically a Maxcom 4E with a crystal filter. Or a Midland 3001 with a crystal filter. Um, so we need to use the crocodile clips, even though we'd normally use a power lead for these. And 
of plugging the test equipment to the extension speaker and the PA speaker to the PA speaker and it isn't going to work because that switch is broken power on 13.8 volts just like that and it starts off on channel 19 right are we going to put picture on picture on we are there we are the transmit is doing a full 4 watts well isn't that a good start well considering that high low power switch is knackered how's it working at all I'm not even showing you the right meter. Honest, I did press the button. So there we have exactly four watts. So on channel one, it's 4.0 something. And on channel 40, it's 3.9 something. So it's well balanced. that's excellent so in low power what's he doing how do you get low power when the switch is broken switch broken the transmit current let's make sure on channel 20 is an 1.179 and the deviation wallow wallow is 2.1 kilohertz we can bring that up a fraction frequency I've only had the test set on 20 minutes so take this with a pinch of salt is 27 79 100 It will come up a bit from that. That's fine. I will adjust it anyway. We won't be doing the VCO because you have to add extra parts in to do that. So unless you've got an actual fault, it's expensive and time consuming to do. They they manufacture these on a pin jig, which means they can put less parts in, which means they can charge less. So the RF meter, when you key it up, this is five, it might not be adjustable. Right, let's go. Let's have a look at the receiver. So I'm going to just dial in 2779100 so that it perfectly matches the transmitter, so that it's a fair test. Make sure we've got the things in the right position. Sign that meter on. Are we here? Yeah, we're struggling with that. It's original factory mic on this as well. So the 12 dB is doing 0.7, which is about where you'd expect. For 10 dB, 0.57. For 20, it's doing 1.75. Squelch, tend to squelch the full. I can't do ever. So, squelch tight is never opens. And at its most sensitive position, if we put this to standby, mm. 
0.32. So for S9 on the meter, and this may not be adjustable. It is four millivolts, which is not where it should be. Meter lamps working. No. Yes. Yes. Check this PA function. Testing one two, testing one two three, one two three, one two three, one two three, one two three. You can use the mic gain and the volume. That's well thought out. Well, that's a good start, isn't it? See, it, it, it works. Um, the only thing to address is that switch. I'll be passing that on to Mr. Chippy. So we'll go through. Here we go. So at the moment I don't need to get the service manual out because I can remember the procedure. So I'm in PA. We're on channel 20, we're on channel 20. So peak. I'm sure this is all spot on. Slight adjustment there. It'd be funny if after when I've done this it's it's actually worse. Drop it one out four point two watts. That's the generous side of four. So let's go over to I've lost my pen already, it's mingled into the background. So we're still four watts, but we've retuned it. Channel 1 is now 4.05. Oh, look, it was before. Channel 1, 40, I mean. Is 3.95. Right. And the transmit current is now 1.123. So I have made it more efficient. What a good boy. Now the meter, we want to read 4 if it will do it. So I've got it between the 3 and the 5. Transmitted audio, let's get our little oscillator out. Just bring that up a fraction. That might be enough. Voila, it's not quite enough.
Well, that's still not enough. Wallow, that's it. Let's do the frequency, if it'll come up. Let's see what year this one is. It's 85. actually get to the trimmer capacitor There you go, twenty seven seven nine one two six. Let's see if we can get a bit more out of this receiver. If we're going to worry about low power, uh, so Mr. Chip will have to do that. And that might delay the radio three days because he's busy as well. Right, we'll go to the. We'll start by going to up to the oscilloscope. Hundred microvolt signal on the oscilloscope. I've got a tiny, tiny bit there, but they can shift in transit. About 4 dBs on the sign of meter. smoke coming out of this radio. Where's that coming from? Let's turn the power off. Oh, this is why I've got the bottom on, isn't it? I'm going to go over this with isopropyl alcohol, but I can't see a reason at this stage. Last time I had smoke out for radio, it was a Moonraker 24 volt set, which turned out to be a 12 volt set. The box was lying. It went bang and pop, didn't it? Oh, 
Well, I can't see anything. Nothing to beat getting smoke out of a customer's set. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do that for a start get rid of that twazzled on wire extension that they aren't the wrong length yeah it would be ideal if they were a bit longer but that's not how it's been manufactured Right, well, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll put the power back on. It's going to be like a pantomime. It's, Can anyone see the smoke? Yes, yeah, behind you. And you look the other way. Behind you. People outside of the UK might not might look need to look at what a pantomime is. <laughs> Right, where are we? With the sign ad meter, we're going to try and get that to there, to about the four, and we'll start tuning. That's spot on. Spot on. Spot on. And spot on. So, whoever's done the tune, well, the whole thing's spot on. It's just, um, it's got a broken switch, hasn't it? And it just needed me to check it. Let's see what, what sign that we get now. It'd be funny if it's worse. So there's 12, we've now got just a whisker away from 6, it's 0.595. I think bringing that detector that fraction has done an improvement. 0.595 microvolts. Let's shut that up. Uh, we want 10 dB. about there, 0.44. You see, I didn't notice, I didn't think we'd made any improvement to this, but we have made an improvement to it, which proves that you can't do these things by ear, even when you're a church organ builder and you've got fantastic hearing as regarding things being in tune or not. But uh, it just goes to show, have we have we cocked up the, the, the other one though? I would say that's 20. We've got 1.4 and a bit. Let's put 1.45. So we have made it better. I mean, you might get an extra 10 yard range on this. But what we do need to sort out is that squelch. But first of all, we'll do the S meter. So 100 microvolts on the signal generator. Not any more smoke. Where was that from? Uh, S meters on the back of the meter when fitted. And there we have S9. And finally, the squelch. So I'm going to set this to full squelch. And it squelched it out. If we look at the preset, that's at full whack, which it doesn't... We want to now... Turn that preset until we get the signal generator coming through. And 
it's there. Squelched out. And it's opening from... I'll just put the attenuator up on the... So, 100 microvolts and it, it comes in. So that's sorted that. Now let's see what the sensitivity is like at the other end. So we'll park the signal generator at 0.3, turn the squelch down, set it to threshold. So we've got 100 microvolts there. It's 0.26 we'll call it. So it's just as sensitive, it's fantastically sensitive. Very, very good. So the only criticism of whoever has done the tune-up on this is the squelch. You know, the fact it's slightly on, not, not on frequency is, it, I can put this, we've got four test sets and they're all locked onto satellite, but you know, they're gonna be different. It's just, we're not working in space, are we? You know, it doesn't have to be ridiculously accurate so that's it we just need I'll take this apart oh we've got this antenna warning indicator thing have we had our SWR meter back I think I'm sure we've had an SWR meter I'll pause the video Well, incredibly, it's come back to my bench from the chippy department. So the only two things I'd like to do the AWI if I can find a, a matcher, and he's done this switch. So we've now got high low power. Hopefully, he's really good at putting switches back together that are broken. And we, we should have got some scrap AM sets. Um, sometimes, so that one's already had the switch pinched. But that's a, a, a typical example of where we would get a switch from because that's a Maxon made set. Good. So now we just have to verify that that high low power works and we'll set it up for the correct amount of power right switch it back on And let's go to our meter. So in the no, oh, that's not right. always in low power it's 350 milliwatts four hundred milliwatts now but unfortunately Just drop the frequency because uh, now the test set's warmed up. It's a bit high. Excellent. Well, we better investigate and see what's happened. Why is that not changing? 
Okay, so pulling on the wires, which he will have done, I found that the input wire to the switch had got a dry joint where it goes onto the printer circuit board. And I can see it's been uh, gone through for dry joints in the past, so I suppose uh, there's another potential one there. That's another wire. So it must have been just finished it off by pulling it slightly, I suppose. Good, anyway, that's sorted that. We'll let that dry. Now I've got another I have got another matcher, but I haven't got a um, I want to do set. I would like to set this up. I'll just verify if it works or not. To be honest, I'm not that bothered anyway. Um, we normally do these with a matcher and set it to something like three to one SWR, and then twiddle that till it, the light just comes on. And um, I'm, I'm not, I've let my matcher out somewhere. And the other thing was. We have got a standalone matcher which isn't connected to an SWR meter. So what you'd need is a is rather than a patch lead between the two, you actually need that double male adapter as opposed to the PL258 double female. And you know, I don't seem to have got a double male adapter here. I must order one and then we can just show you how that's done. Well, I've done them before with you, but um, do it again. So let's see if we switch it on. Wow, there we go. That's brought that back. Yep, full four watts. And the 400 milliwatts are set. There we go. So we just want to check this antenna warning thing. And I'll do it the rather rough and ready way. We'll simply disconnect the aerial and see if it comes on with a one fraction of a, of a burst. So I've unplugged the aerial. It doesn't come on. Well, that's going to be novel, isn't it? I mean, there may be a fault on the circuit. Stick it on low. I don't know whether these work on low power. We'll stick it on low power without an aerial. Yep. So look, with no aerial on low power, we've got that on. So it's only very, very slightly different to where it was set. But that's not the way to do it. It is you need to do it with a matcher box. I don't want to blow up somebody's PA, but that was done with the precaution. And then in with the thing connected it's back to normal. Good. Not ideal. Right, let's put the top lid on. These are the right, these are the normal length. It's just uh, somebody wanted to extend it, didn't they? So 
because if I go on the other box from the same customer tomorrow um, they've actually got they've actually got the polar they've put Y for yellow but in fact it is the other way around uh, so I think that let's make sure that's off before I put the set in the lid inside uh, I think that someone in the past has got this wrong And it really doesn't matter, it just means the cone would work the other way. It's not like you've got a hi-fi stereo system and if you've got one speaker out of phase, you'd end up with a kind of hole in it. Hole in the effect. Ah, oh, I can see the problem. You can't put the lid on. Right, so in that case, the speaker's in the wrong position. We need to rotate the speaker around into a position where we can have enough wire. So that is that position. Hey. Right, we'll put the screws back in. I did look at closed auctions and saw this uh, did sell on eBay recently and it did say in working order but you know the usual no guarantees type of thing which is wrong and you know what this radio was was spot on wasn't it I mean I brought up the deviation a bit which is uh, usually the opposite um, so yeah I mean whoever set this up it was right it's just that the um, High low power. Oh, that screw goes round in circles. I uh, don't think there's anything we're going to do. But we'll put a different screw in, one of our own, and just hope it's got a bit more thread on it, and not screw it in forever. Yeah, that's held. Uh, so the high low power switch, whether or not that was uh, okay at the time, was on this type of circuit. The high low power works if the switch is broken um, normally it would be in low power if the switch was broken but it was in high power so there we are Mr Chippy said that hadn't been linked out so uh, there we are good so we'll put this on the aerial instead of on the test gear There 
we go. Switch picture in picture off. So I will just say when you're in local mode, it's got local and long distance on that switch. When you're in local, the RF gain is activated. And when it's in DX, it's on full sensitivity and the RF gain will do nothing. So that's how they work. Filter's just that, it's just a, a it, it's a tone, it's just a tone thing. We'll be better off with it in the treble side anyway. So that works. And obviously you've got CBPA which we've shown you and, and high low power. So let's have a flick round. It's now about seven o'clock and we really need to be scratchy cornering this. One well, no, no, Roger. You'll be joking. So everybody sounds distorted. Because they're over deviating or they're off frequency. So you can hardly tell what they say. So we'll put it on Mega Chippy channel, and hopefully we'll be able to tell what he says. So thank you for watching Maxcom 30E, which nicely set up by somebody else, and I've just uh, tweaked it a little bit there and got a little bit more out of the receiver, but um, we've got more efficiency on the transmitter. We've got that for now for 400 milliwatts, because that was broken, switch broken, switch broken, Mr. C repaired, so they're done. Right, there we go, thanks for watching.